Stanford University. Okay, well, welcome to lecture 17. Uh, this is kind of our last regularly scheduled lecture. Uh, next, uh, the next two lectures that we have, which are after the holiday, are actually going to be guest lectures, and uh, uh, we will have uh, some fun lectures uh, for you there. Today, we're going to uh, talk about um, media. And uh, so there's a few topics here. One is how to get media into your application. And by media, I mean uh, sounds, uh, video, uh, audio um, together, video and audio together, so like, which we call a movie. Uh, and then also image, static images you get to the camera. So we're going to talk about how to get that stuff um, all into your app and how to do things with it. Uh, we'll talk about the MP Movie Player Controller. So that's uh, an object that lets you play movies in your user interface. Um, and we'll talk about the Assets Library, which is just a mechanism for uh, saving your videos and images uh, into the user's uh, space that they can manage with their Photos app. And finally, we're going to talk about sound. Um, we're just going to talk about simple sound because we only have so much time, uh, but I'll give you some pointers to go uh, look at more complex sound. I don't recall that any of you are doing a final project that has really intense uh, sound mixing and other requirements, um, but a number of you want to be able to at least play sounds, if not actually record some simple sounds from the user. So that's what we're going to talk about today, uh, all media stuff. So let's talk, we'll start with the UI Image Picker Controller. Um, so the UI Image Picker Controller is a, a controller that you put up modally. Uh, you call present modal view controller animated to put it up. It's a UI view controller. And when it comes up, it'll let you choose uh, images or video, either from the camera, if the device has a camera, or from the user's photos, saved photos library, saved uh, videos library, that is something they manage with the Photos app, and also that syncs with their iTunes. So the way you use this uh, UI view controller, you alloc init it, just like any other view controller, uh, and you set its delegate. Then you configure it, and the primary configurations are what kind of media and where is it coming from. Then you present it modally. You know, it's uh, just like has the same rules as any other modal view controller. And then when it's done, when the user's finished, you know, looking around, taking pictures with the camera, whatever they're going to do, uh, and they say they're done, then a delegate method will get called and tell you uh, what the user chose. Now, what the user can do, where they can, what images they can get, or what video they can get, or whatever, obviously depends on the platform. So some devices have cameras, some devices don't. Um, some of those uh, cameras can record video, and some can't. So you need to, just like all these other APIs, core motion, core location, one of the first things you always need to do in your code is find out what the device you're on can do. Okay, and you do that uh, in two steps, really, with the image picker controller. The first is you ask whether the type of source, meaning where the images or video is going to come from, uh, is available on this platform. So there's three options here. One is the photo library, which is the user's synced uh, library, synced library of images and video. Uh, the camera, which obvious camera, and some devices actually have two cameras, and I'll talk about that in a second. And then there's the saved photo album, which you, is kind of a halfway house between applications and the user's photo library. So when they go to the Photos app, they're looking at all their synced um, photos and video from iTunes, but then there's also a camera roll in there you've probably seen, which is basically the recent pictures taken by applications or taken by the camera application itself. Uh, on the app. So those are the three places you can get uh, videos or image from, one of those three spaces. So obviously a key one here to ask is, is the UI picker controller source type camera available if you want the user to be taking uh, a picture. Uh, now there's a second step though, because not every source type, for example, can give you video. So some cameras you can't get video out of, you know, 3G, S's, I guess, or I'm not sure, 3G, 3GS's. Uh, at some point, there was a turnover where you can start getting video. And so there's a second class method you call here on UI Image Picker Controller called available, available media types for source type. So you pass it the source type, like the camera or the photo library, and you get back this array of strings, which is a little bit of an odd API, 
um, and that'll tell you what type of media can be gotten from that source. Um, and then there's these two constants, uh, type image and type movie. One is for static images, one is for movies. And a movie, the word movie, when I use that today, means uh, a uh, media file or media source that has both audio and video synchronized. We call that uh, a movie, all right? Video is just no sound, audio, no uh, images, no video. Uh, movie is a combination, okay? So uh, normally you're not actually checking for type image or type movie here. Uh, usually you're either just setting the type to be image because you know you only want static images or you're willing to deal with images or movies in which case a lot of times you'll set the, the media types you want to be the array that comes back from this. In other words, I'll take anything the user can give me and I'll try and deal with it. Um, so uh, as I said, some devices have multiple cameras like a camera in the front and in the back. And it is possible, there's a bunch of API in here, some cameras have flash, right, the iOS, iOS uh, sorry, iPhone 4 and the iPod Touch, the new iPod Touch have flash, uh, eh, maybe iPod Touch doesn't, but <laughs> definitely the iPhone 4 does. Anyway, uh, you can use all these methods, methods to find out if there's a front camera, rear camera, whether it's flash, and set the flash modes, uh, all that business. So you can look that all up if you're interested in that. Usually we're not setting all this stuff. We're kind of letting the user set that because uh, if we put up the UI image picker controller with the camera, there'll be buttons on there for set my flash to auto and switch between the front camera and the back camera. So we're gonna let the user do that 99% of the time. Um, okay, so now that you've found out what the device can do, okay, you now have to set in the UI picker, so you, you've created this UI picker controller in, uh, instance by doing alloc init, and notice that I'm uh, abbreviating UI image picker controller to be UI IPC, because otherwise my slides, all the lines would be going off the edge all the time. Uh, so, uh, so I've created the picker instance, what do I need to do? Well, you can see the first line there, I'm setting the delegate. One slight note about this, when you do this, uh, you're, the compiler's gonna start complaining that your delegate, self in this case, does not implement UI navigation controller, okay? And that's because UI image picker controller, um, it's del it is a UI navigation controller itself, which is kind of odd. And so uh, you, all you need to do is say you implement that, but you don't actually have to implement any methods out of the UI navigation controller's delegate protocol. So uh, pre be prepared for that. Uh, so anyway, so here what I'm doing is I'm saying, if this device has a camera, then set my source type to be the camera. So in this code, what I'm gonna say is, I wanna get an image, and if there's a camera, I'm gonna try and get it from the camera. If not, I'm gonna kinda of default to getting it from wherever I can get it, which is gonna be the photo library uh, by default, the saved photos. Um, so a lot of times what you'll see applications do is put up an action sheet here where you'll say, I want an image. And an action sheet will come up and say, do you want it from the camera or the photo library uh, or your saved photos? Or maybe just photo library and camera. Um, and you click which one you want and then it sets the source type to whatever they chose. Obviously it's not gonna offer you any choices that aren't available source types. Uh, and then off you go. So, but here I'm gonna set it to the camera if it's available. And then I'm gonna say that I want a movie. I only want a movie. Uh, so I'm gonna check the available media types uh, to see if it contains the object movie, K-U-T type movie. And if it is, I'm gonna set my picker's media types to be an array with just that one object in it. If not, I'm gonna fail. So I'm gonna put up an alert or something said, couldn't capture movie, because that's obviously I'm going for the movie from the camera here. Um, uh, so this is just, I just put this up as kind of an example code of how you manage setting the source types you want, setting the media types, asking what's available, et cetera. And you can do any combinations that you want depending on what your application is trying to import. Sometimes you don't want movies. You can't deal with a movie if the user picks that. Uh, a lot of times you just want a static image, for example. Um, okay, so what else can you say set about the picker before you put it up, okay, to the user uh, modally? And one thing is editability. So it's really a pretty powerful user interface for editing um, that you, know, you as the API caller don't really know exactly what you're gonna get here. Uh, it turns out you get some, something that's pretty powerful for the end user. But what you're basically saying to the picker controller here is to whatever extent you can allow the end user to edit this photo, uh, let them do it. 
okay? And you can either have that be yes or no. And we'll see what that looks like when we do the demo. Uh, you can also limit the video capture either to a certain quality type, like kind of low res video. Uh, like if it's something that you're going to be embedding in a little small thing in a web page, maybe you want it to be really low uh, quality. And also time duration. You can say, oh, I, I don't want more than a one minute snip here of video or even 30 seconds. So you can set that um, duration as well. Um, there's a lot of other things uh, like how the flash is used and things like that, uh, which you can check in the API. But uh, these are the main things that you're going to set. So after you set all it up, set it all up, you present the picker, and usually then you'll just release it, okay? So it's just like in any other modal view controller, you present it, and then you just release it, okay? Then the user's gonna muck about in there, picking whatever they want, and when they finally pick something, it's gonna call this delegate method, image picker controller did finish picking media with, in, uh, with info, and we'll talk about info in a second. And so that's the method in which you're gonna extract whatever they chose out of the info, and uh, then you're going to dismiss the modal view controller. Again, just like any other modal view controller. All right, so what's in that info dictionary? Okay, so you can look in the documentation and see what's in there. Here's five of the most uh, commonly used ones. Uh, the first one is just a string, which is either that type in or type movie, saying what the user chose, whether they chose an image or a movie. Uh, the second one is a UI image, which is the original unedited, if you allowed editing, image that they took a picture of with the camera or got out of their photo library. And then the second one is edited image, that's after they edited it, cropped it and you know, uh, translated it to where they wanted it. And uh, then crop rec tells you the rectangle in the original views coordinate system that the edited image ended up being. And then this last one, which is kind of fun, is media metadata. So that's things like um, the resolution of the image, uh, what kind of device it was taken on. This is, it's obviously going to say iPhone here. Um, probably has things like latitude and longitude in there if the user allows that to be captured, uh, that kind of stuff. So you can look in the documentation and find out uh, what's in there. Um, so those are the kind of things that are in an info uh, dictionary. The most important ones are the original and edited images if you're doing a static image. Um, or, uh, oops, this might be cut off here about, yeah, there is one missing here too, which also is the media URL if it's video, okay? So UI image picker controller, uh, media URL it's called, uh, that would be a URL to a video. When it captures video from the camera, it puts it in a file in your sandbox uh, and then returns you a URL that points to it, okay? Unlike an image where it gives you a UI image. Okay, what else about the picker controller? Uh, and so that's pretty much it. You know, you put it up, the user does what he does, you get the delegate method, you get the image, sim simple as that. Um, there's some other kind of cool stuff you can do. There's this camera overlay view. So you can put your own transparent view with controls or whatever on top of the image that the user is trying to capture with the camera. And uh, you can even replace, if you want, the controls, the controls that say take a picture or whatever, with your own controls by setting this show cameras control, uh, controls equal to no. If you set show, shows camera controls to no, then you better have a button somewhere in your custom overlay view that is take a picture. And then you call this method take picture to make that happen. And uh, you also, the, the image that's coming from the camera and being displayed on screen as the user tries to decide what they're going to take a picture of, you can zoom it in, uh, or translate it. I don't know that you can rotate it, but you can certainly translate um, and scale it. And why would you want to do that? Well, your custom controls might be putting some kind of border and you want the image to fit into a certain place on there, right? You might put your custom controls all the way around the outside of the image, so you want to shrink it down, put it in the middle, or you want to stretch it up to the whole screen. Um, one thing that I mentioned up here is the camera is taking a four by three ratio picture, although that may not even be true uh, on the iPhone 4. I think it might be taking a widescreen. I can't remember the exact thing, but in any case, it might not be exactly the same as the screen's aspect ratio. And so you might want to be using the transform to blow it up to use the whole screen with some loss or whatever. Um, that's usually pretty sophisticated stuff. Most people just put the picker up um, and use the standard uh, user interface, which might be better for the user unless you really are going to be doing something special with that overlay view. All right, so 
Why do, so if I get an image back, a UI image, I know what to do with that, right? We have UI image view, all that thing. What if I get a, a movie back? Okay, how do I display that movie on my screen? I want to put that uh, in my app. And uh, you do that using this uh, class, this framework called the Movie Player Framework. And uh, there's two important classes in there, Movie Player Controller and Movie Player View Controller. Okay, so these things together are used to play back movies, and they support these two uh, formats up here. And you create either of them by saying init with contents of URL, and you pass a URL, same kind of URL you're going to get back from the UI image picker controller, right? And then the uh, MP Movie Player view controller is a modal view controller, okay? And it, you know, on the iPhone is full screen. Um, not really sure. I think it's probably full screen on the iPad as well. And uh, the thing that's different about it, though, is you don't present it using the normal present modal view controller. You use these two methods to present and dismiss it. Present movie player viewer controller animated. These are added by cat using categories. And uh, so, uh, but otherwise it acts just like a modal view controller. It's going to put that thing up, let the user play the video, rewind, you know, do all those things. And then, when the, then there will be a done button. When they click done, the modal view controller will come back to you and you dismiss it uh, normally. Uh, there's also, though, this M uh, MP Movie Player Controller, not Player View Controller, but Player Controller, and it has a property called View. And this is a view that you can actually embed in your own views, okay, in your own view hierarchy. Does that make sense? So it's not going to take over the whole screen, so it can be like uh, an embedded thing. Um, you have to be a little careful with this view. You can't just unlimited put this view anywhere you want. Uh, you have to create your own view that is going to be put in, and this thing's view has to fill the bounds of that view. Now, that your view might be in another view hierarchy, that's fine, uh, but whatever view you put, add this thing as a subview, it needs to fill the whole bounds. That's one restriction of it. Also, you cannot be mucking about with the um, subviews of this thing's view. You have to think of it as just like it's one view. It might be built out of other subviews, but for you, it's one view. However, you can add subviews to it, which is kind of cool. So doing overlay views for video, really easy. You just add a subview that's you know, mostly transparent um, and then draws what, what you want to draw. And uh, y there's also a way to actually put, put a background uh, view on this thing too, but uh, check the documentation if you want to do something like that. But if you just want to put a video up and maybe have you know, something, a title or something overlapping it, it's really easy. You can just add your own subview um, to it, okay? So. The, some videos that are out on the web require credentials to play. I'm not going to get into that here, but um, go take a look at these NSURL um, classes, NSURL credential, NSURL protection space, NSURL credential storage. Uh, you just set those up with the username and password uh, for the credential that you want to, uh, to get, and then you can use that to play the video. So just so you know if you're going to try and do that to look those up. So that's playing movies, really easy. Um, the assets library is just a little class that manages storage in that saved photos album, right? Where users kind of this halfway house, like I said, between the photos, uh, their photo albums and the apps. And one thing to note about writing an image or a video, uh, these things are big, okay? Most images the camera takes, they're high resolution cameras many megapixel cameras, uh, it takes a while to write them out to flash memory, because flash memory is not super fast to write, okay? Uh, so these methods in the library, like write image to save photos album with the metadata, that's the same metadata you get from that info uh, dictionary, uh, they write that, they do it in a thread, and then they'll call this block when they're done, okay? So, uh, so you, and it can take, you know, two, three seconds sometimes to write a big image uh, out to the file system. And there's a similar write video uh, to save photo album as well. And also you can look in the save photo album and find uh, assets that are there. Okay, so that's a simple class. Okay, sound. So there are a lot of different APIs, frameworks for doing uh, sounds in iOS. Uh, there's core audio, which is kind of this lowest level um, uh, audio processing 
uh, API. There's AV Foundation, which I'm going to talk a little bit about today, or at least pieces of, which is kind of a middle ground in terms of ease of use. Um, there's obviously the Media Player Framework, which you saw that uh, video thing in. There's something called OpenAL, which if you guys know what OpenGL, which is, is the 3D graphics language, well, there's OpenAL as well, which is kind of a 3D sound language, sound processing mechanism so that, you know, you're playing a space game and the things sound like they're coming from behind you, even though, you know, the two speakers are in front of you, uh, manages depth and, and width of the sound. Uh, and there's a whole mechanism in there for uh, mixing and, I mean, some of the highest end sound processing applications in the world that run on Mac OS are using the same libraries that are available for you on iOS too. So if you ever have an interest in building some really pro complex um, sound processing application for the iPad or the um, iPhone, there's definitely the tools for you in there. But today, we're only gonna talk about uh, simple audio playback and simple recording because that's what most of you need and it'll get you started. And that stuff is, there's two, two forms of that. Uh, for playing sounds, you can use AV Foundation, which I'll talk about in a, motion, in a moment, or there's also this thing called the System Sound API, which is a C API, and this you use for things like, you know, beep and bonks and, you know, little uh, small special effects in your uh, application. And the, oh, before I get into that though, uh, yeah, iPod library, so at least one of you maybe two of you want to try and play music out of the user's iPod library in your app, right? Uh, the way you do that, I'm not going to talk about that today uh, for time reasons, but uh, the basic idea is there's this class MP Media Picker Controller, which is a view controller you can put up that lets the user pick songs out of their iPod library, or you can actually create these things called MP Media Queries, which are kind of like NS predicates, but for looking in the music library. So there's things like, you know, artist equals Beatles, okay? Now if you search, you'll get results, okay, on that one. So um, you can create your own MP queries and then uh, get the results, and then you use this MP Music Player Controller to play it. So that's what you need to be looking for in the documentation um, if you're gonna be doing that one. That one counts as a only by looking in the doc feature since I'm not gonna demo it today. All right, so back to this simple sound playing API, the C API. This is for short, non-repeating, playing immediately, no volume control, uncompressed file formats, okay? So that's a lot of restrictions. This is very simple. But it's great for beep, alert sound, uh, vibrate the phone, actually, you can do this way if you want to do, you know, vibrate. Um, so how does it work? Pretty simple, you register the sound with the system and then once you've registered it, you can play it. And so there's this uh, type def system sound ID. Uh, so I've typed uh, my sound to be one of those. And then I went and get a path to a sound file. Now remember, this has to be uncompressed format like uh, AIFF or WAVE or something like that. Here I've gotten it out of my main bundle path for resource. So this would be uh, an AIF or CAF file in this case that I dragged into my uh, resources bundle in Xcode. Uh, then I need to turn it into a URL because this all takes a uh, URL. And then I call this function audio services create system sound ID. Now notice that does not take an NS URL. It takes something called a CF URL ref. Okay. Anytime you see these CFs, and you might have seen this in the debugger or in leaks or things like that where you're seeing, oh, what's that CF string, CF, is, CF array, what are those? Well, CF is short for core foundation. And so uh, CF a string and CF uh, array and CF URL ref actually can be casted into each other with their counterparts NS string, NS array, NS URL. So in this case, I have sound file URL, uh, which is an NS URL, and I'm just casting it to be a CF URL ref. Um, you might ask, why did both of these things exist? Well, the whole CF core foundation mechanism is not using uh, objects. It's not using Objective C, right? Uh, it's using pointers, sysdructs, and things like that. Uh, so, but uh, through the magic of programming, they've made them so that you can just transfer between the two um, directly by casting. Uh, okay, so now you've created this system sound ID. Uh, it's returned it. You see that's ampersand my sound, so it's uh, set my sound to, to be that system sound. And you can play it by just saying audio services play system sound. Give it the my sound, boop, it'll play. Uh, when you're done, you need to free it, 
okay? And you do that by audio services dispose system sound. And you definitely want to free these things when you're done with them because sounds are not small either, especially uncompressed sounds. Now these are short sounds, probably you know, half a second type of sounds or even less, but still uh, uncompressed, you know, they're, they're a decent size. And if you had hundreds of them, you can start using a significant amount of memory. And then I said you could do um, vibrate. If the device can vibrate, there's a special system sound, K system sound ID under by vibrate. Uh, so you can play that. There's also this function, audio services play alert sound, which will uh, kind of does things that are device uh, dependent. So check the documentation on that one. But uh, so some devices have vibrate where you can set a setting that says vibrate when the phone rings. Well, if you do that, then in, and on that kind of device and you call place alert sound, it'll play your sound and also vibrate if that switch is set to that. You see what I'm saying? Um, but if you just want it to do the vibrate, you can just do system sound ID vibrate, okay? So that's the simplest sound API. Very good for sound effects, uh, beeps and bonks, yeah. Uh, when you tell it to play a sound, does it do it in a different thread, or does it take up the main thread until it's done? It plays it in a different thread. It plays it immediately, though, and you can't control the volume, anything like that, but it returns immediately and plays the sound. So your application continues to run, so you don't block the main thread. Um, by the way, you might have sounds that you got from the internet or recorded yourself and maybe they're an MP3 format or some other compressed format and you want to convert them to an uncompressed format so you can make a sound effect out of them for this purpose. There is uh, a uh, uh, Unix command here, AF convert, that ships with uh, the SDK, it might even come in Mac OS that uh, lets you convert between file formats. So check that out. Check the man page on that one. Okay, so AV Audio Player, this is part of AV Foundation, which is a framework, its own framework. Um, kind of a medium level object oriented API for uh, playing and recording sounds. Uh, so we're gonna talk about AV Audio Player first, which is the player. This now is for playing longer sounds, maybe even 30 seconds or a minute, or maybe even a looping background sound, some music for your game as the guy wanders around, you know, some music is playing in the background. Um, you can set it to loop, you can pause it, uh, you can seek around in it, right? Say so go to this point in it and start playing there. Uh, it provides metering, it'll tell you the volume levels, uh, lets you play multiple sounds at the same time and will automatically mix them. So that's kind of cool, right? You got your ambient music on the background and then boo, this explosion, something like that. It's another sound, you can play them at the same time. Um, it's an object oriented API instead of the C API and it supports a lot more file formats than these just uncompressed. So this is a lot better, right? This is not even the highest level sound API and it's a lot better uh, than uh, the C API. So how do we use it? Um, okay, you allocate and init it using the URL of the sound file. So same thing, I'm using the exact same path for resource here. This one happens to be an MP3 though, instead of a CAF file. Um, I get the URL and I just say AV audio player alloc, init with contents of URL, this U sound file URL. Okay, exactly what you would expect. And now you just play by sending play to it. All right, and you can pause by sending pause to it. Um, you can scrub. Everyone know what scrubbing is? Scrubbing is moving around in this file. So you fast forward and, re and rewind basically. And you do that simply by setting the current time property of the player, right? So here what I'm doing is I'm assuming I have a slider that has a value that goes from zero to one and so I'm just setting the current time in the player to be the duration of this player, so that's the duration of my sound, how many sec you know, seconds or minutes long it is, times the sender's value, so number between zero and one, right? So I'm scrubbing. And you can literally have this slider on the screen and be moving it back and forth, and it'll be rewinding and playing that sound in real time as you do it. It's really pretty awesome. Um, you can also set the volume, player.volume, uh, from zero to one. Uh, you can also find out what's going on as this thing is playing by setting yourself as the AV player's delegate. So you can find out when the thing stopped playing because you might have some uh, explosion and you want the explosion sound to complete before you move on to the next thing. Um, also there's this interesting concept called interruptions. So if you're playing a sound and a phone call comes in, your sound will stop. Okay, you'll get paused. 
and this message will be sent to you. You can't do anything to this player while that interruption is happening because the person's talking on the phone, using the phone's resources. And then when the phone call is over or whatever might cause the interruption, couldn't, might not just be a phone call, but that is the number one interruption, uh, you'll get this thing, end interruption, and then you can continue. Okay, continue the sound, you might need to adjust, you might want to scrub to a different location at that point, switch to a different sound, who knows what, but um, you get notified. And then if there's problems in your sound files, uh, they're not encoded properly or whatever, you'll get those errors uh, as well via the delegate. Okay, so it's pretty powerful but simple to use uh, sound playing API. And there's an analog, which is AV Audio Recorder, very simple to use, recorder style, okay? Same thing, you allocate an, an init. Now, of course, here, the URL that you're passing it is a URL that it's going to use to store the sound data that it's recording, okay? Recording usually off the microphone, could be the um, plug-in mic. Um, and uh, so it needs a space to do it. So you're gonna create a URL. Usually you're gonna create it in your documents directory or your cache directory, maybe, if it's just gonna be a temporary file or whatever. Um, the notice it also has this uh, settings argument. That is things like the sample rate, uh, how many channels, stereo, not stereo. Uh, you can just set it to nil if you just want like dirt simple sound. You don't. You just want the system defaults. Uh, it's perfectly fine to set that to nil. And then you've got the NS error star star, which will return an, an error. You can set that to null if you want. You'll when you call this if there's an error and that's null, uh, you might get nil back from your alloc init. Um, but, uh, or you might get a recorder that won't record, so you should be careful there. It has a delegate as well, find out what's going on. Uh, then you just send messages to it to make it record. Recorder, record, and that starts recording. Of course, in the background, in a different thread, your program continues to run, but at the same time that it's running, it's recording whatever's coming in until you say recorder pause, or you can say recorder stop. So here, for example, might be the code, if you had a toggle button that toggles between recording the sound, and then press it again, it stops recording. Okay, and then you hit record, it goes back and re-records it. It doesn't continue recording from where it was. Oh, actually, if you pause in this case, yeah, it probably would do exactly that. I'm not 100% sure of that. You should check in that. Probably does, yeah. And uh, there's also recorder stop, which would just stop recording. Okay, and then if you record it again, it would record over. You can find out how long you've been recording for, current time. This one is not like current time in the player where you can scrub by setting it. This is just reporting to you how long this thing has been recording, how many seconds we've been recording. Uh, there's also the meters for this one as well. The way metering works is a little odd, so I'm just gonna go through it quickly so that you don't get too confused. Uh, first, you have to enable metering by setting enable meter to yes. Then you have to call this method update meters, okay, which will update the meters, and then you can call peak power for channel, average power for channel, and it will give you uh, the meter level. You know, on recording, you could actually use this to uh, have, uh, what do they call it, uh, when you, it only records when you're speaking. There's a word for that, I don't remember now, it's escaping me. But, uh, you know, so they don't have to press buttons to do it, they can just, you can have a recorder going, and when the meter gets to a certain level, then you're recording and drops down, you're not, uh, recording the data or whatever. Um, okay, so I'm gonna do demos of this stuff, everything but the video stuff. Um, and, uh, but before I do that, I wanna get out of Keynote, so I'm gonna tell you what's coming up. Uh, tomorrow we have this Friday section, Evan Dahl. Next week is this holiday week here at Stanford Thanksgiving, so there's no lectures, okay, not even uh, on Tuesday. And the week after that, I'm gonna have guest lectures. Uh, we talked a little bit about uh, that. And then the week after that is your final project presentation uh, on Monday of that week. And uh, remember that the code is due the day before that and slides are due a few days before that so that I can uh, assemble them all, okay? All right, so demo time. So I, well, the, t the two demos I'm gonna do, one is we're going to, we're gonna do both these in Label Mover, our favorite uh, monster app that has all kinds of features wedged, bolted on the sides, kind of Frankenstein. Uh, so the next Frankenstein feature we're gonna bolt on there is to allow us to set the background of the label mover to an image. Okay, so we got the label mover, right? Moves that label around. Right now it does it on a white background. We're gonna make it so that we can uh, set an image taken from the camera. Uh, and then the second thing I'm gonna do is 
Uh, you know, we have the asker view controller that comes up and says, who are you? And it has the text field and we type in, you know, I usually type CS193P. Uh, we're going to add a button on there that lets you record a sound at the same time. Okay? So that asker is not only going to ask you for, uh, ask you the question in text, it's going to get your answer in audio as well. And then we're going to, we'll use it uh, in the label mover. Okay? So that's what we're going to do. So let's go back to my label mover here. Um, okay, I'll run it real quick. Uh, oh, let me run in the simulator first. We're not going to get the accelerometer here, but I just want to show you. So here's label, and remember, we click it, it goes around. If we had the accelerometer and we were moving it, it would be sliding, drifting towards an edge uh, or whatever. And we also have the timer in, so it automatically, every six seconds, moves. Okay, so what we're going to do first here is set this background image. Now, um, UI view has a set background color, which is cool, but it doesn't have a set background image uh, method. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to add a method, uh, a property actually, called background image, which sets a background image of my view. Uh, and I'm, doing, I'm going to do it this way because I want you guys, when you think about how you implement something, to think of doing it somewhat as if you were the framework designer. Okay? You don't always just want to be the end, end programmer hacking, bolting things on. You want to think about, ah, oh, I really wish the iOS had this method. Well, maybe there's a way you could add that method to your class. Okay, and so that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to add a method, a property called background image. Okay, add sign property, retain. Uh, it's a UI image, background image, I'm going to call it. Okay, now I'm going to implement this also in kind of an interesting way. Um, since sometimes I might not have a background image, I'm not even going to have an instance variable for this. Okay, I'm just going to have uh, the top level view, remember that we've got a view hierarchy and there's got a top level one, that's the one in the back. I'm just going to have that be, uh, if, if I have an image, that's going to be a UI image view. All right? And so, uh, and I'll set the image. And then if I set the image again and I notice that that thing is UI image view, I'll just set it. But if I set the image and I've never set an image before, then I'm going to put a UI image view into my view hierarchy um, at the top. Okay? So that way I don't even need to have um, this instance variable. Now I'm going to have to use introspection here um, to find out whether that top level view is, uh, is that. So let's, uh, where should we put this? Find some space in our, let's put it down here at the bottom. All right, so uh, first let's do the setter. Uh, actually, let's, uh, uh, let's, yeah, let's, let's, what did I decide? Yeah, let's do the getter first. All right. So image, UI image, background image. So the way I'm going to do this is uh, I'm actually going to just return self.backgroundImageView.image. And then I'm going to implement this method, self.backgroundImageView. And the reason for that is I'm going to need that for the setter as well. So UI image view, background image view, okay? And so this, I'm just going to say if um, my self.views subviews object at index zero, which is my, um, all, my top level um, view, if that is kind of UI image view, okay, then I'm going to return that thing. And I could probably make this better, pull out uh, common code here and all that, but let's just go like this. Okay, otherwise I'm just going to return nil. So I'm not going to have this lazily um, instantiate this. That way I can find out if I have an image set without creating this image view, right? So I can, I can ask that question without um, causing that to happen. Um, oh, sorry, is kind of class. Uh, okay. So now the setter, let's do the setter, set background image. And so if, um, here let's do this, let's go UI image view background image view equals self dot background image view. Um, all right, so uh, if I don't have a background image, let me scroll up so we can see it a little better here. Sorry. 
Yes. Okay, if I don't have a background image view, then I'm going to create one here. All right, and I'm just going to say my background image view equals a UI image view, alloc init with frame, and I'm going to set it to be my whole views frame. I want my background image to fill my whole frame, so self.view.bounds. Uh, then I'm going to put it into the view hierarchy, uh, uh, self.view, insert subview, this background image view at index zero, which is the top uh, of the view hierarchy. And then actually I can release it. Because remember when we add something to the view hierarchy, it takes ownership of it. So I don't need ownership any, of it anymore. Um, now I'm going to say background image view dot image equals image which you might say, ah, I just released that thing. Yes, but I know that in the context of this method, there's nothing that could have happened to that thing to have it removed from the subview inside this method. And we know that UI kit is not multi-threaded, so it's not like some other thread is going to muck in with that hierarchy. So it's perfectly safe um, to go ahead and set our image here. Oops. All right, so did everyone see what I did there? So I just created this new property, uh, background image. I did it, made it setter and it's getter, and I just used introspection to be able to store it in the view hierarchy, which is where it belongs anyway, okay? All right, so now I have that image view thing. Uh, what do I want to do next? Well, I'm going to make another gesture. I got my swiping to the side, and I've got my tapping. I'm going to have another gesture, which is when I swipe up, okay? When I do swipe up, it's going to bring up a UI image picker and let me pick an image from the camera to be my background. And now I've got this nice method. My nice method. It's going to be really easy um, to set it. So let's add that gesture. Let's go up where we have our other gestures up here in view to load right here. So I'm actually going to copy and paste this swipe gesture. Okay, and I'm going to call this swipe gesture swipe up gesture. Swipe up. Swipe up. And to make it a swipe up gesture, I need to tell this, this needs to be swipe up as well. I need to tell this swipe gesture, swipe gesture direction to be UI swipe gesture recognizer, what's it called, direction up or something like that? Uh, yes, direction up. Okay, so that's how I make this swipe gesture different from the other one. The other one has the default direction, which is left to right. And, you know, for readability of code, I might want to go up here and on this swipe direction, swipe direction, just set it explicitly. Even though I'm getting um, the, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, swipe gesture. Uh, even though I'm, yeah, let's, Look it up in the documentation, shall we? Sorry. Remember what it is here. Direction. So here's swipe directions. Uh, so the default is right, so that's what it's just called right. So let's put that in there. Right. Okay. So I just put that in just to make my code a little more readable. Instead of it having the default direction, it's like, oh, what direction is that? Someone reading this code is going to say, oh, I see. This is the right direction. This is up direction. All right. So now we have this swipe up, swipe up method, which is right here, right? That's the target. That's the action, rather, of the uh, swipe up gesture. So this is the method in which we're going to put our UI picker controller up um, and, you know, configure it to the source type we want, et cetera. So this is pretty straightforward. So UI image picker controller, controller uh, picker, I'm going to call it. UI image picker controller alloc uh, init. OK, so it's a, it's a uh, modal view controller. Uh, I'm going to set myself to, I'm sorry, I'm going to set the picker's delegate to be myself. Right, because I want to get the message when the picker's done choosing. I want to make sure um, I get notified. Then now I'm going to do this source type thing, and what I'm going to say here is if the UI image picker um, source is source type available, UI image picker controller source type camera. So if the camera is available, then I'm going to set the picker source type to be the camera. 
Okay. If not, I'm going to take whatever the default is, which presumably just going to be the Save Photos uh, library, or maybe it'll put up some UI that says there's nothing to choose from, which would be fine. We'd be telling the user then there's nothing to choose from. But the user is asking for an image, and I'm going to try my best to let them choose it uh, from the camera. Again, I could put up an action sheet here. might be even nicer to let them choose whether they want it from the camera or the Save Photo library. Uh, but here I'm going to say if the camera's available, I'm going to use it. And I'm also going to allow editing. Okay, we'll also let you see what that um, UI looks like. And then I'm just going to self present modal view controller, the picker, animated, yes. And now I can release the picker. Okay, because once I did it, present it as modal view controller, uh, uh, it's taken, that took ownership of it, so I don't need to own it anymore. Okay, so I am the delegate here. And in fact, if we compile, you're going to see we have a uh, warning here that we don't implement the UI navigation controller delegate protocol. This is what I was telling you before. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm actually going to implement both the UI image picker controller delegate and the UI navigation controller delegate, um, even though I'm not going to actually do anything in that one. So now, build, no problems. So let's implement that delegate method. That's all we really need to do here. So it's called image picker controller, uh, image picker controller, picker uh, did finish picking media with info, and that's a dictionary star info. Okay, so this is going to actually return the, the image information uh, to us. So I'm going to say UI image, image equals, first I'm going to look in the info uh, to see if I can get the key, the object for key, um, UI image picker controller and edited image. Okay, so let's see if we can get the edited image. But if the user, if I went back later and turned off editing, where I don't allow editing, then this would always be nil. Okay, so I have to be careful here to try and write some robust code in case I might go back and change that allows editing that I set right here. If I set that to no someday, this is going to return nil. Okay, so I'm going to say if not image, in other words, if there's no edited image, then I'm going to set the image equal to UI image picker original image. Okay, so that way I'm going to get the image one way or another. If it's edited, I'm going to get the edited image. If not, I'm going to at least get the original image. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. So <coughs> if there's some image, then all I got to do is say self background image equals image. Okay, and that's it. And then we'll dismiss our model view controller. Okay, so because we wrote that nice self back set background image, <coughs> it made the implementation of this method pretty, pretty easy. Oh, yeah, good call. There we go. Uh, I think I got it on the other ones, I hope, yeah. So, um, so here, so I swiped up, and it's showing me my photo, saved photo albums, which I have no saved photos, so there's nothing I can do here um, on the simulator. Now, the simulator, actually, it is possible to put photos in your saved photo album, so you, you could use it to test. Um, if you wanted to do that, uh, but uh, not here. So we really want to see it uh, on the device, so let's do that. Change this. Okay, so here's our guy. He's running. Can you see that okay? It's probably a, a little glowing. It's working, and let's see our accelerometer is working. I'm tilting it from side to side, tilt up. Okay, so that's working. So let's go ahead and swipe up here. Okay, so here's the camera. Now it's showing black, which is not so good. Um, I could actually switch over to the front camera. There's my hand, you can kind of see. Okay, so there's my camera. So I'm gonna take a picture. I have a nice subject matter here to take a picture of, so I'll take that. There we go. Okay, so there's my subject matter, my little San Francisco Giants uh, 
rally rag. Uh, so here you can see the editing interface. This allows me to zoom in, right, and to move around to pick a different piece of the uh, image, okay? And you can see there's a retake button here in case I wanted to try again. Um, but here I'm just gonna use, so I click use, and it set this as our background image. Now, notice it stretched it to fit because that's uh, the default uh, behavior of UI image view. When you set an image on it, it stretches the bits to fit in its frame. But you can, there's a thing in UI image view, you can control that behavior. Uh, but anyway, you can see that it's a little hard to see, but our label is still there, you see it? It's still moving along. Okay, so it's still working. This is all still working too. Okay, so that's it. So that's all there is to do in the images. Really, really, really simple, okay? All right, so now let's go do sound, which is also pretty straightforward. Okay. Oh, yeah, I want to show one more thing, um, which is the assets library thing, uh, saving the image that the user chooses into this saved photos thing. So let's just do that code really quickly. Um, I'm going to do this automatically every time the user picks an image. You probably wouldn't want to do this. Okay, if you have an app that lets it set the background image, you probably don't want to be storing that to save photos every single time. You probably want an alert that says, do you want to save this to store photos? But I'm just doing it here um, so you can see what that code looks like. And what it looks like is this. You get AL assets library, library equals AL assets library alloc init. Okay, so that creates uh, one of these asset library instances. and uh, I'm going to get the uh, metadata out of the info, which is info object for key UI image picker controller media metadata. And then I'm going to say library uh, save, what's it called? Save, write, write image to saved photos album. Uh, that's the image. Now, one thing you probably may have not noticed on the slide is that um, this, kind of similar to the uh, CF URL thing we saw, this method does not take an NS, Im or UI image rather, okay? It takes this thing called a CF image. And so I can do that by sending a message to image called, or sorry, CG image, core graphics image, not CF image. Uh, so I can send this message CG image to all UI images and it'll give you this core graphics image, kind of a lower level, uh, less object oriented uh, uh, interface for, the, for uh, an image. So I got that and what's the other thing I need to send? Metadata. Metadata. And then completion block. Okay, this I could do, you know, up arrow, blah, blah, but I'm just going to say nil. No completion block. And assets library import. Probably I need to go to my frameworks here and add the framework assets library. Yeah, yes. All right. I think that's it. So um, let's go ahead and run that real quick. Show you what this looks like. Okay, so let me swipe up. Okay, this time I'm gonna take a picture over here of this marker. Okay, so I took a picture of the marker, and I'm going to say use. Okay, so it used it. That's nice. Uh, but now, if I go out here to the photos, and I look at all my photos in the camera roll, you can see it added the marker. You see the marker right there to the camera roll. So now the user could then drag it into their photo albums or whatever. Um, so that's how that works. Okay, that's that. And now the sound. Okay, so the way I'm gonna do this sound uh, thing, remember I said that I wanna be able to associate a sound with whatever the label is that I enter in the controller, is I'm gonna change my asker view controller's uh, delegate method, right? Here's my asker's view controller delegate method down here. I'm gonna add another 
uh, argument to it. And because this is getting so wide, I'm going to put it on multiple lines. And I'm going to call this one with audio. And I'm actually going to pass back an AV audio player, right? Because I'm going to record some sound from the user, and then I'm going to pass it along to whoever is ask, using the Asker controller uh, by passing an AV audio player. Call it answer audio. Okay, better import here. Import AV foundation. So AV foundation is the framework. Better go over here to frameworks. Add framework, AV foundation. Um, okay, so that's that. Uh, so how am I going to implement this new audio? Well, I'm going to need a, a recorder so I can record it, and I'm going to need a player so I can hand it off to my delegate. So let's just add those as instance variables. So AV audio player, I'm going to call it player, and AV audio recorder, I'm going to call it recorder. Uh, in my UI, right now, I bring up that text field and I type CS193P and I hit return and my delegate fires. Okay, Well, I don't want to do that now because I want to give the person a chance to hit record and record their audio. So I'm going to add two new buttons to my UI. One is record for recording it and another one is done. And done is going to dismiss my uh, modal view controller or it's going to resend my delegate method basically. Um, so I need two IB actions for that. IB action done and IB action uh, record. Okay, and that's pretty much it. That's all I'm going to uh, be changing in the API of this thing. So um, let's go over to uh, Interface Builder real quick and add those things. All right, so here's my Interface Builder. Right now it only has this label. So I'm going to add two buttons. Okay, and we'll use the blue lines to center these things. There we go. We'll call this one record. Call this one done. And then we'll just wire these up. Oops, no we won't. Small screen. How about this? All right, now we'll wire these up. Oops. Hello. Maybe I didn't save that or something. Uh, AV controller action done. Hmm. Okay, let's go back here. There we go. So that's record, and that is done. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do in the user interface. And so now let's do the implementation. Pretty straightforward. Right here, where I have text field did end editing, that's where I'm firing my delegate method right now. So I don't want to do that anymore. So I'm going to comment that out. And I'm going to just turn this into my IB action done. Oops, done. Now, one other thing I'm going to do here, just to be totally correct, is I'm going to say if my uh, answer self dot answer field dot length is uh, greater than zero. So I'm still not going to allow my answer field to be uh, zero characters long uh, because I don't want the person to bring it up and then just hit done right away. Even though the text field won't allow it, that to be entered, I don't want them to do that. Although I think I might um, become first responder, so it probably doesn't matter anyway. But let's just be careful here. And then uh, with audio player. Okay, I'm going to pass my player along. That, so that's it. That's all that's necessary for done. Of course, we have to make player work. Um, oh, check the text. We have to, you know, we have to load this thing up with player. And if the person doesn't record anything, the player is just going to be nil, which is fine. We're, we'll communicate to our delegate that there's no sound by passing nil here. So that's all winning. So let's do record. That's where the uh, real magic is. One thing also, let's not forget down here. Let's release our player, and let's release our recorder. Okay, want to be good citizens there. All right, uh, so record is, um, I'm going to record the file, uh, the data that comes in, into my caches directory. Remember that the caches directory be like where 
you know, a browser would keep its caches, whatever. It's never backed up to iTunes, and I would never want this file backed up. Um, so I'm, that's a place to kind of put a temporary file like this. So I'm going to say string um, cache directory equals, and now you search back in your mind a couple of assignments ago. We have this search path for directories and domains. Remember that one? I'm going to do the caches directory and the domain mask is NS user domain mask. And it's man tilde, yes. Uh, so that, and I'm gonna just take the last object out of there. And then I'm gonna make my URL, record URL, uh, just say NS URL, URL with string, uh, the cache directory, string by appending path. Uh, component, and we'll call this answer recording the AIF. Okay, so that's my recording thing. Let's make sure we get on brackets matching. We're all, uh, we're all good. Okay, so now uh, we hit the record button. So if we're recording, okay, if recorder is recording, then uh, I'm going to stop the recorder. Okay, so that record button that I put in, I'm going to hit record, say whatever I want, hit record again to stop. Okay, and yeah, I should probably set the title of the button to say stop or something like that when it starts recording, all that. You could do all those niceties uh, for this demo. We're not going to do that. Um, I'm now, your question? Uh, I'm going to release my old player, okay, because I just stopped and I want to set the player to have the new thing I just recorded. And then I'm just going to create a new player here. Audio player alloc uh, init with contents of URL. The record URL. That's the thing we just finished recording, right? We just hit stop. And error if null for here. And uh, then I'm actually, let's play back what I just recorded. Just so, so I'm going to hit record, say something, stop, and it's going to play it back to me so I can make sure this is really what I wanted. Okay, otherwise, if the recorder is not currently in the middle of recording, it means we need to start recording. And if we start recording, then the first thing we need is a recorder. So if there's no recorder, then recorder equals AV audio recorder, alloc init with URL, this record URL. And I'm just going to use default settings. I'm not going to catch errors right now. And then I'm just going to say recorder, record. Okay, so hopefully that's it. Um, uh, now, one other thing we need to do, obviously we got the other side of this. This is the asker, it's doing its job now, asking for the recording. Let's go make uh, our label mover use it. So what is, how is the label mover gonna use this new feature in our asker? And what it's gonna happen is every time I click to make it move, I'll play the sound. Okay, make sense? This is just an easy way to we got so much loaded into the, AP, the UI of this thing, uh, we'll just load some more on there. So let's find tap. Where is tap? There's tap right here. So every time we tap to move, um, I'm going to play. So to do that, uh, I need to, um, let's have an instance variable called audio and put that thing that comes from the delegate in there. So let's go back to our controller's header file and add an instance variable here. It's an AV audio player, call, I'll call it audio. Let's make a little property for it. Tame, AV audio player star audio. Let's synthesize it setter and getter. And then let's set it. And we set it in the delegate method which is right here. So again, I'm going to go like this so we can see a little better. And then with audio, maybe, oops, audio, uh, answer audio. Okay, let's tab that over. And so I'm just gonna say here, self.audio equals uh, answer audio. And are we okay on memory management there? I think we are, because 
Audio is a retain property and we have a synthesized setter for it, so it's going to retain this thing. Okay, but we do need to deallocate uh, audio release since we retain it. So I think that's it. That's all we need to do. Let's try it out. So I'm going to make this a little more exciting by grabbing this image again. Oops. All right, so let's get our San Francisco Giants going again here. Okay, there's our San Francisco Giants. I'm also going to, um, okay, so here, here's our thing to change our, th our uh, name or our label. And you can see we've got our two other buttons there. It's a little washed out. I'm not really sure how to make it not do that, but uh, let's try a different name than CS193P here this time. Let's try Buster, oops, no. Oh, it even knows that. Buster Posey. Whoops. P O C Y. Okay, so there's Buster Posey. And let's record something here about him. Rookie of the year. Rookie of the year. Yay. Okay. <laughs> so now I'm gonna hit done. I'm gonna click done on here, which is gonna send the delegate method over. Okay. So now when I click Rookie of the Year. Rookie of the year. Okay. <laughs> Rookie of the year. Okay, so that's it. Um, about perfect timing here. So that's all I was going to show you today. Uh, hopefully that, that will be the level of sound uh, playing and recording that you want to use uh, in your applications. If not, if you want to use more or whatever, feel free to uh, contact us and then we'll try and point you in the right direction as best we can. And so I'll see you. Have a good uh, holiday next week, and good luck with your final projects. And I'll see you in two weeks or a week and a half. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.